All right, guys, we're gonna try something a little different here. We have a 2009 EasyGo RXV that needs a full service. Customer states she has never done the full service since she's owned it, which is <laughs> not good. But uh, we'll see what's going on with that. There's also no lights. She says no lights work and the battery is new. It won't start, it just clicks. Well, that I figured out to be just a loose connection up here with the wing nut, so we can we could address that pretty easily. Lights I'm hoping is very similar, maybe a bad fuse or a broken wire or something. Um, full service, oil change, filter, spark plugs, check the tires, brakes, belts, lights. Uh, instead of breaking out the big camera, I figured, well, let's try this thing out here since it worked fairly well with a couple other videos that I did. And I'm going to just get your feedback on this. I want to try with no lavalier mic on my shirt, uh, no big camera, just normal lights that I have. You know, I'll turn all my big lights on, which I haven't done yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're going to try to figure out how the editing goes with this camera as well. I don't know what that's going to be like yet, so... I'm hoping by using the GoPro, I can get you in a little closer and a little tighter, uh, as opposed to, well, here, I'll show you my other camera here. See, I use this GH5, and you can see it's a, it's a pretty large rig. So trying to get into some tight places, and don't mind my messy shop here, kind of started going through belts and parts and all that. Uh, normally, I can't get you in certain places because the camera's so big. And it gets in my way when I'm working. So I'm going to try using the GoPro and see if, one, it's not going to overheat because these things do that, which is ridiculous, but I digress. Two, if I can get you into tighter places than I normally was able to with the big camera. So we'll see how that works. And three, we're going to see how well and easily these videos edit because they're a little bit different format. Yeah, let's jump into this one. Uh, we're going to start with diagnosis before we do any sort of service on the cart. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Oh, the other thing that's really nice, it's got a really wide angle lens. I kind of have it like swing, shrunk down just a little bit because I don't want to deal with that fisheye crap. This might have a little bit of a fisheye to it, but it shouldn't be too bad. Also, the other thing is the audio quality. Uh, I need your feedback on audio quality. Now, based on a couple other videos that I have done so far with this camera, it seems to be okay even at a fair distance. So I'm hoping that the audio works really good with this mic on this camera and I don't have to go and buy any more expensive gigs for this stuff. So, all right, let's jump into this one. Lights. No horn. Nothing. Oh, if anybody knows if there's any rebuild kits available for these jacks, it's a Harbor Freight three ton or three and a half ton. What is it? Three ton. Three and a half ton. I don't know. It's the Pittsburgh heavy duty, long, low profile jack. It's leaking down on me and it's really annoying. So if you are familiar with those or know if they make rebuild kits for them, let me know, please. I appreciate it. All right, so what I'm gonna do, all right, so here's the fuses for the lights, I think. They look good and they're 15 amp. Ah, well, I think we found our problem. Let's see. There we go. I don't know who put the battery in. It certainly wasn't I. I guess the other thing I need to check too with this camera is how well the battery life is going to be because... Oh, the other complaint too, before I forget, is she was complaining about this negative battery cable being all frayed, which... This was a bad idea, whoever did that. This, cut this zip tie. Um, it's not terrible. I mean, we have to fix it. We can't just leave it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a, see it's actually starting to fray this cable too. I'll probably go through and take that bolt out, which is probably a T537.6. You know, the one T Torx bit that I don't have. And take this off. We might replace this end. I'll shorten this cable up a little bit since it's got plenty. Uh, since we're in here, you know what I may do? I'm not a fan of these wing nut 
style battery clamps, even though they're perfectly fine, I might just replace them with the different style that I like to use. I think that'll give us some, this one wasn't tight either, give us a better chance at this thing working the way it's supposed to. Uh, let's see, oh look at that, that one's corroded. There we go, all right, so we'll clean these up. Uh, so yeah, so if anybody, if you're ever wondering how to take these batteries out, there's a clip, a, a bolt down in here, a T45 bolt down here. Coarse thread, it screws into plastic, and there's one down here. You basically have to lift this bracket straight up and out, and you make sure the battery fits when you put it back in. But um, it's, as you can see, it is a little loose fitting in here, unfortunately. It's just a really, it's a terrible design, it really is. It's, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Gloves. Okay, let's get these that out of the way. Let's get these off of here. Like I said, they're not bad. I just don't like them. And just in case you're wondering, the reason I don't like them is because the wing nut is really hard to tighten, especially in the position that it's in. If it was on a different cart, different location, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But we got to take them off anyway because. Ooh. Ah, that's stuck on there. Yeah, this is a new battery. 522 is the date. So these aren't even dirty yet. <laughs> Pull that crap out of the way. And now this is the style here that I like because I could take these two nuts out, or bolts out, and use these two as uh, cable, termina ter bleh, bleh, cable termination points. Since they're a 7 16 nut and a half inch bolt on this side, or half inch nut on this side, uh, these work pretty well. I like these these connections. I buy these by the carton. The one downside though is the negative side fits on without any any trouble. But the positive side, because the, the, the clamp is so squashed when you get them, you have to back that nut out really far. And then I use these terminal spreaders. I mean, you can basically just shove a, probably like a, needle those pliers in there and open them or reverse pliers and that'll open them but I use these terminal spreaders these work really nice and they don't damage the terminal which is even better okay hear the jack creaking down you know and it's funny because this jack will leak down and it just started doing it so it's not like it's been doing it for a while it started doing it I think a couple weeks ago so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this down here. I'll get my whiz wheel out. We'll clean the uh, battery cable ends. This is not an optimal position for this battery. Good job, Easy Go. Let's make it hard. Yamaha does this crap too. They have the the battery mounted so it's battery mounted so it's inside and underneath can't get to it easily enough and don't worry about touching the frame as long as your battery cables are not hooked up so the battery is technically isolated so it doesn't really matter so much so yeah guys just comment down below watch the whole video if you want but just let me know what you think of the audio I'm really trying to minimize my equipment use uh, even though I do like using my big camera but I, want, I really want to try this GoPro out all right so let's clean this up first I like using my air die grinder so you have this little Ingersoll Rand thingy angle die grinder I like this with a buffing pad on it it's nice Hit the um, electrical wiring. Oh, great. Well, I guess it'll be a good test to see how well it sounds with the air compressor going. So I'm going to take these off, look up our positives first, and then we'll jump over to the negatives. And I will reuse this plate. I like using this plate as part of the uh, <laughs> a little 
brain fart there. It has like a spacer or a big, a giant washer. So we'll do this. test to see how well it sounds with the air compressor running, huh? There we go. See, now what I'm going to do is move these out here so we can get to the fuses more easily. And then I'm going to... I like to try to stay consistent. I like to use the outer ones for the wiring for the lights. The outer bolts here. And then keep the inner ones for the main cart electrical. It just, in my opinion, I just think it makes it look a little nicer. And this battery has a go handle on it, so it kind of gets in the way. And these are just 7 sixteenths or 11 millimeter. And you don't have to go really reefing these down too tight because what'll happen is eventually it'll start pulling that nut that's in there up and strip it out and it'll round it off. There we go. All right, so our positive side is done. Negative side is connected, but I gotta fix this, uh, to straighten this wiring out here. See, now this I'll zip tie down here like this after take that out, which I think is a T45. Let's see, T45? Yeah. And then I have this adapter here for hex drive things. Oh, wonderful. Where did that go? Please tell me it hit the floor. It didn't. Did it? No. Oh, why do I have a feeling that we're going to be removing the battery from this thing? No, it was just right here. I got it. Hidden underneath the frame rail there. I found it, though. Let's see if it'll stay in there this time. Nope, it will not. Wonderful. Wonderful design. It's an awesome design. I love it. I do. Oh, is there a nut on the bottom of this? I think there is. Yes, there is, because mm. no, there is not. Okay, I was gonna say we're gonna put some anti seize. On. Oh, that's fantastic! Good job, Easy Go. Let's use Torx bits everywhere. And use large size Torx bits so nobody can get them off. That's probably a T50. I bet you that's a T50. Because it's starting to round. This is a T45. I know this takes the battery tray out. Great. Well, let me figure this one out because some idiot decided that was a good idea. I didn't realize I had a T45, which this is a T50. I believe it's not a T45, but unfortunately I don't have a T50. I don't have anything bigger than a 45 and I'm going to try not to round it out. I might actually drill it out and put a, I can't use this T45. I'm going to ruin it. I might put a regular bolt in here because this is stupid. Okay. It's almost out. So yeah. 
Some idiot in engineering thought this would be a fun thing to do. I like Torx bits, but you know, really, do, why does that have to be a T50? That is stupid. That could have been a T40, a standard size, a normal size for normal people. Okay, enough complaining. All right, let's um, let's figure out what we're going to do with this ground lead here. See, this side here is starting to fray a little bit, but this is kind of getting a little out of hand. What I think I'm going to do is I might cut this end off completely right here. And then I'll cut this one. See, this one here goes to the battery. So I'll cut it right just before the fray and I'll put a new hoop on it and cut it off of here. Maybe I'll just cut the one. I can leave that one then, right? Yeah, let's do that. I have to get new cable cutters too because these ones are starting to show their wear. So I'll cut that off. And then I will cut. Somebody decided to use these to cut steel cable and fudge them up on me. I don't cut very good on the first cut. All right. So that's a much better cut now. I think we can handle that. And then we can go through this process here. So what I'm going to do while I have access to it, and then the right thing would be to clean that up. So I'm shove that down in there, move all these wires out of the way. Die grinder. Let's see if I can get in here now. All right, okay. I don't even know what the thread is on this. All right, so if any of you have an RXV, a gas RXV, and you want to replace this stupid T50 with a regular hex head bolt that's easy to get to, it's a M10 by 1.5. Uh, this bolt obviously is entirely too long, so I'm gonna see if I have a shorter one, which I probably do in my drawer of bolts, and we'll see what we can do as far as swapping this out. I knew I had one that was short enough. Okay, perfect. Now we can begin the re. You know, let me clean this one here while I have while uh, while it, yeah, I can't talk today. While I'm at it, now some of you are going to give me a hard time about taking the coating off of these. They're fine. They are fine. Okay. Six gauge cable, five sixteenths hole. Put it in my crimper here. Take this wire. We'll slip it right in there. Let's see. Do it in a position so I can actually see what I'm doing. Alrighty, there we go. Let me show you this here. So you can see how that looks. I like to get it just slightly proud of the inside of the hole. And I put it in my crimping tool here, like so, and squish. And then I'll slide it forward and do it again. There we go. I truly believe that crimping is the only proper way to make a solid connection. I don't like soldering. Not that it's a bad thing, I just prefer to do it this way. Okay, so there's that one, that one. There is another negative in here somewhere. Where did that go? Here it is. Let's dust that off real quick. All right, we should be done with the noisy crap now. I'm gonna actually put this one on top. That one, that one. Now, ideally, you would replace this entire cable. I'm gonna actually 
burn it down under here. But instead of waiting for one from Easy Go, and they changed their website, so that's that's a lot of fun to deal with, trying to order stuff off of that. Total frickin' nightmare dealing with Easy Go, I swear. I know I complain a lot about them, but a lot of the stuff they do is just outright stupid. My opinion. Alright, so I know that is a 16 millimeter. Oh, really? These, I believe, is an, this is an extra bolt from a seat kit. There we go. Look at that. Nice and tight. A lot more flexible now. No sparks. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll probably... I'm going to try now to... Keep that out of my way. I'll zip tie all these wires up cleanly when I'm done. I just want to... This here. And yes, I know that there are more than more T50s all over the cart. They practically use the whole T50 bolt availability to put these things together, which is fine. But my opinion is. Just use regular damn hardware. Nothing wrong with good old fashioned bolts. I mean, they work. It's just T50s, really? This is not necessary. You know, it's not. T50 down there is not necessary. A half inch hex head bolt would have been perfectly fine. And I mean the, the diameter or the size of the hex head itself, not the uh, size of the bolt hole, because that's a 5 16. It's not like it's a high current carrying thing. I mean, technically it kind of is, but it isn't. All right, so we got this wire here that I smashed down in there. I don't want to keep those down in there because I don't like the way that sits. Now we should have... Lights, horn, turn signals. We have lights, horn, and turn signals. Okay. So we have officially fixed that problem. So that's great. Battery issue is taken care of as well. It should actually crank over easily now. Let's see. Yeah. The battery sounds a little weak, but I'll test it. If not, if it's not bad, then we should be. I think we're going to be okay. It is a new battery. Let's put a. Let's throw a zip tie on that. See, this cable's even. No, it's not chafed. That's good. It's only the choke, but still. But still. All right. So let's do that. Get a giant zip tie. Just gonna grab them all, get it started. Put them down here. We'll keep the fuse in an easily accessible area, like so. That wire is separated. There we go. Okay. And then we'll cut this off. All right. So that is a much better, in my opinion, setup. I would have rather have replaced the ground cable because it would have been a cleaner job, but honestly, it's it's fine the way it is. Okay, now I think we're going to start moving on to the full service. Let's take a look-see at our air filter. Oh, the air filter looks new. How dirty is it? Let me blow this out. So you can blow the air filters out, save a little bit of money. There wasn't a lot in that. 
no sense in replacing something that's not really bad. You know, I mean, that filter looks practically brand new. Now, fuel, oil, and oil filter, on the other hand, I would do those annually. Uh, let's, I'm going to spray this. I did notice some of these RXVs, for whatever reason, they, they crank over so slow. Don't know what it is, so let's see, let's, I know I'm upside down. 12.6 volts, battery test, flooded, cranking amps, um, 665 at 32 degrees. It's above 32, testing. Good and pass, 778 cold cranking amps. Okay, so this battery's good. Let's check the charging system, we don't wanna print. Start engine, let's see if this is actually gonna, actually, I have to take the camera off the exhaust pipe first. Needless to say, I broke the uh, little adapter thingy, majigger that's got one of those um, line, light, uh, lock line type of connector. So I had to revert to the crappy little one that I have, so we'll see. Oh, little fun tip. What was I saying? I don't even know. But whatever, the the thing that I had the camera on, the, the mount, that broke a thing off of it, so now it's done. Uh, let's see, belt's good, belt's good. How's that belt look? That belt looks a little, I think we're gonna be needing to put a drive belt on this bad boy. It is wore the F out. All right, so if you want to run this thing in neutral, hopefully you can see this. There's this little pull thing here. You get your cart in neutral, you pull it, and just get it out of that little lock, and now you're locked in neutral. I recently found out about that. I've never really messed with that, and that's perfect. So at least they did something right. I actually like that better than club cars. Okay, let's uh, do a cranking test on here. Ready? Oh, let's... i got to restart the test because I it timed out. Let's see, check out the cable complete, system test, turn off loads, start engine. Let's see, I don't know if this is gonna be able to pick up the cranking amps or the load. Turn the key on, dummy. Nope. Let's see if we can fake it out with the lights. So that, that's the problem with these on golf carts. They don't really work that great for testing the charging system because especially the starting and charging, they can't detect on some of them the uh, voltage drop because it's so little. All right, so let's go, let's move forward. So everything's good. It's not unexpected to have high ripple on a golf cart because it's the way the charging system works on these things. It's a little different than like an alternator, for example, because it's a generator. Kind of like an alternator, but it's not. Um, fuel filters next. We're going to change the fuel filter. The gas looks a little gnarly. We're going to suggest to her that we change the drive belt because it is riding halfway down the clutch. And the clutch is completely closed, the driven clutch, so we know that belt is out of spec just by looking at it. Air filter's good. We're gonna check the spark plug, make sure it's the right one, make sure it's not weirdly burnt, but we'll probably end up changing it anyway. Uh, and then now we can spray down our battery terminals with some battery terminal protectant. A lot of people have asked me why I put grease on the batteries, and it's not, it's not grease. It's It's this battery, battery terminal protectant from Max. It's a Napa house brand, I guess. And it stinks, and I'm also going to spray a bunch on that, because now that that's 
a different type of material, I'm sure. That stuff really stinks. Try not to breathe it. What I'll do is I'll take my little blower here. Just to try to get rid of the fumes, because that stuff reeks. Um, but yeah, it's not grease. It's a battery terminal protectant. And the, the success that I have had with batteries not even getting corroded and dirty with that stuff is awesome. So I use it all the time. I buy that stuff by the case. I have, uh, I've actually had batteries stay nice and clean for a very long time where I haven't had to touch them at all. So it's, it's a good thing. But yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna undo this because this is nonsense. Let's throw that right in the garbage. Spark plug first because we're here. Ooh, not even tight. Not even tight. It's carboned up though because it's. All right, there we go. Now it's coming out loose. It wasn't coming out very good. Oh, look at that. It is perfect. That spark plug's not even dirty. Let me clean those threads out a little bit. All right, there we go. See, it's a plug like this isn't bad. So it's not even, threads look good. Not even worth changing, you know what I mean? Save yourself a little bit of money, guys. Don't, uh, oh, that's hot. Don't change something if it's not broke. If it, now if it was all carboned up and the electrodes were a little funky, you know, I would definitely consider changing it then, but I wouldn't, uh, there we go, torqued. I wouldn't go wasting money on stuff that doesn't need to be done. Uh, now, like I said, the main things that should be always changed regardless, fuel filter, oil, and oil filter. If the air filter's still clean, run run it. If the belts aren't frayed and cracked, run them. If they're not wore out as well. Like the dry belt on this, I'll show that to you when we get to it, but it's shot. All right, let's do this fuel filter. Kind of digging this GoPro thing here. It's nice to just be able to whip the camera around, not have to worry about it falling. No big heavy lenses to worry about. Now when I take fuel filters off, if there's no shut off, I'll take the tank side off first. So that way the dirty fuel that's in the filter can't flow back into the tank. And then I'll take the other side off. I got this really nice oil pan too. I don't know if I've showed any in any videos yet. I don't know. These videos don't always get released in the same order they're recorded. Okay, oh, I got a broken glove. There we go, and I always date my filters, or I always put a date on the filter so I know when I changed it. And also the customer knows that I've changed it and they can see it. Okay, we'll set the hoses back in their <clears throat> little things here. Okay, that's the fuel filter. So what I'll do now is I'll prime it. We'll run it here in neutral. Ooh. I got the engine 900,000 degrees. This will be fun. Okay, fuel's done. Brakes are actually good on this car, so we don't have to pull drums or adjust them. They're nice and tight. Uh, we're gonna jump down and do oil and filter. So here's that oil filter pan, or oil drain pan I was telling you about. 17 gallons, and it is full. And I'm trying to do this one-handed. But yeah, it's got uh, all of the carts that I've serviced so far this year. All their oil is in here. And it slides right underneath. It's on wheels. It's got a crappy pump on it because this thing's stiff as all hell. Does not rotate easily. I actually want to put a drill on it when I go to pump the stuff out. Okay, so I know some people ask about checking the diff oil in these. I uh, don't see an easy way to get to any... No, oops, I almost hit myself in the face with the camera. No drain plug. 
No drain plug. Those are through bolts. That's disappointing. There's nothing easily accessible in the back here. Yeah. So, pre-engineered horse shit. <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, let me get you set up. Okay. Let's see here. What we're going to do is, see, this is the better designed TX or RXV that has the, uh, let's get that out of the way. <clears throat> the slot cut out here for the oil filter. Looks like an original frickin' oil filter. Wow. Let's see. I don't know. It's definitely not one of mine. But see how it drips down and actually lands in the pan? It doesn't get... There's a couple of drips on the carpet. but not a big deal. Now, in, in the... The redesigning of this, the brilliant folks over at EasyGo made it harder to get the oil filter out. So now, when you undo it, you'll see here in a moment, the 500 mile long threads are, not, the other one you used to be able to drop it down and it would land in a way you didn't have to worry about. You, the hole on the filter would face up so oil wouldn't spill all over the place whatever didn't already spill all over the place so now you get that oh you have to tip it at an angle and dump oil all over the cart so they really changed the problem because now it also runs down the motor and it'll pile up in here <clears throat> this whole engine subframe is just a terrible terrible design <clears throat> absolutely freaking terrible and then uh, they still Kawasaki still uses a 19 millimeter Ooh, that muffler is hot I'm using a socket 19 millimeter socket probably could do this first get it loose okay and now I'll pull this back now that the engine oil is hot it'll flow nice and quick I can just go vloop. Muffler's hot, I can tell you that much. We'll let that drain into the pan. I've been smelling ozone a lot lately. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna take a little bit of little bit of that oil there. Get it on the lubricate the o-ring. Yeah, you can use clean oil too. It's it's fine, but you want to make sure the o-ring is lubricated. Whoops, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to date the filter. I usually use a tire marker and I put it on the end of the filter. I know it's really hard to see what the hell I did, but I use the tire marker as opposed to like a paint marker. I don't have to wait for it to dry. Yeah, it does kind of rub off a little bit when you, oh, my arm's in the way. It does rub off a little bit when you, if you grab the filter the wrong way, but. I'm usually pretty careful about that. Why are these threads so long? Okay, and then I'll go snug. Like, not reef it tight, but I'll go snug. And then I'll try to wipe off as much of this as I can, top and bottom. That oil was a little gnarly, but not terrible. I'll wipe off the drain plug, and then I'll put that in. And yes, I will use a socket to run it in, and then once it touches, I just give it a noogie to make sure it's seated. So I'll go like this, it's still loose, it's still loose. Right there it's touching, so I'll just go, oink, that's it. That's all it needs. Doesn't need much. You don't wanna over tighten it because they are plastic. You will round it off if you do, or you will strip out the threads. Ask me how I know. I've done it. I've made that mistake. Not afraid to admit it either. Okay, let's get oil in it. I'm gonna show you a new idea that I came up with. Check this out. I got tired of the how slow this thing takes oil. 
So what I did, wipe this crap off of here. What does the L mean? Anybody know? I haven't cared enough to want to look it up. So pull the dipstick. Oof, that is. See if I can clean that off without getting it all over the motor. In the motor, I should say. Engine. Right, so I'll just pull it back. Ah, there we go. Nice. Good. Okay. So I got tired of how slow this thing takes oil. So I took this funnel and I put a couple of grommets and some uh, O-rings on it. So now it sits perfectly right here. I could press down on it and then I can just pour the oil into the funnel as fast as I want. The engine takes it as fast as it wants. And then there you go, a quart and a half of oil poured into the engine without making a mess. Well, hopefully without spilling it all over the place. Look at that, there we go. Perfecto. And then, yeah, the oil, the funnel's gonna have a little bit of residual, so I'll just catch that like so. Look at that, done. It's full of oil. Now I'll put this in and run it. Crank it over and then I'll start it up. I like to let it crank for a second because I don't want to let it build a little bit of pressure. Let it sit for a couple of minutes and then we'll check the oil level and make sure we don't have to add any. All right, let's see where we're at. Should be good. And we are good. So it's showing a little high, but we're not exactly level. The cart's sitting up a little higher in the rear. I got tired of the jack sinking down on me. Okay, so now we got spark plugs good, oil and filter good, fuel filters good, air filters good, battery and lights and brakes and belts, minus the drive belt, are all good. Uh, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna check all the tires, make sure they're all inflated correctly. I know the brakes are good because they, it's nice and high on the pedal and the, the pedal's not sticking, accelerator pedal's not sticking. So we're all good there. Um, I'll just go through and do the tires really quick. I'll contact the customer about that belt, see what they want to do, and then we'll button this thing up and get it out of here. Oh, boy. Okay, so it's the next day, guys. So if, <laughs> when it rains, I swear to God, it pours here. Actually, it was a damn hurricane yesterday. As I was finishing up this cart and getting ready to call the customer to let her know that it's done and kind of talk about everything, oh, life just kind of took over and said nope a little bit of a family situation that we had to take care of but that seems to be resolved and good now uh this one is done um i was able to kind of just button it up really quick before i left good news is the jack held all night it's been right where it's at since yesterday when i had to ditch and dump and go basically but i do want to thank you very much for watching as always i really do appreciate all you guys and don't forget down in the comments below let me know what you think of the new video quality, the audio quality, camera angles that we're gonna be trying. I mean, this, this is kind of like a work in progress, so I don't really wanna say camera angles are gonna stay the same or they're gonna change. I'm gonna kind of play with a few different concepts. But yeah, this one is done. So, all right guys, until next time, thanks for watching. Appreciate you all very much, and I will see you in the next video.